Guys, I, I don't quite know how to evaluate this Washington Huskies team sometimes because, you know, we've now had, I believe, four years under Steve Sarkeesian. And in my opinion, we have gotten better with each progressing year. And, you know, this last team that we just had, the 2012 Huskies, <clears throat> in my opinion, was the best team of the Sarkeesian era. And having a team that wins more than it loses is nice. We certainly didn't have that under guys like Tyrone Willingham. And we have a team that can compete on a week-to-week -week basis, unless we play a spread offense. We've seen what spread offenses do to this defense. Even, you know, they, they'll just collapse just like anybody else. But other than that, the team is competing on a week-to-week -week basis. The team is doing good things. And I do believe we are slowly moving forward, but it is a slow process. It's not like what these Seahawks are doing up in Seattle. It's 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 a different thing. The, this Huskies team is moving forward at such a slow pace, you could argue that they're not even really moving forward at all. I mean, this last year, <clears throat> main reason why I say we moved forward is that our defense stepped up in a big way. We had one of the better defenses in the league. We were in the top third of the country, in the top 40. Um, not a shutdown defense like they got down in Alabama or even Notre Dame, but it's it it's a good defense, and it's a defense that kept us in a lot of games this year, and it's a defense that won us some games this year. You know, we needed that stellar defensive effort to beat Stanford, to beat Oregon State, and really to beat California while we're at it. And I believe that represents improvement because the defense was a sieve the year before, and we saw that the offense couldn't make any mistakes. The offense makes one mistake, the game is basically over, <clears throat> especially near the end of the season. It was just like, you, you, I mean, the defense was terrible, and we all knew it. We just knew that the offense had to be perfect for us to win games. Didn't matter who we played hardly. But... The improved defense allows us to be in every game. The problem is the offense took an equally large step back. Uh, we lost Jermaine Curse. We lost Devin Aguilar. We lost Chris Polk. You know, he's in Philadelphia now, I think, and he's not even playing, so maybe he should have stuck around. But um, the offense has been reduced to a quarterback. I still like Keith Price, even though he did have a pretty mediocre at best season. Um, a running back because Bishop, Bishop Sankey, who I did not like going into the season, ended up having a very good season. Not quite, not quite Chris Polk, but close. Cason Williams and the, fuck, I just forgot his name. Oh, Safarian Jenkins. Yeah. I mean, those guys, great. Uh, Cason Williams made a lot of big plays at wide receiver, often, you know, is our only wide receiver worth a damn, so... It was often hard to get him into the game because, obviously, opposing defense is key on him. Safarian Jenkins, fantastic. Probably going to go down as the greatest tight end in the Washington Huskies history. He's a tremendous talent. I think he's going to have a huge season this year in 2013. But that's all you got. You gave Keith Price two legitimate pass-receiving threats, an offensive line that Suffered some injuries, but even before the injuries, they weren't anything good. And that that's basically all he has to work with. He has a good running game, but that's all you gave him to work with. And, you know, last year, Keith Price, he pissed me off. He had a lot of bad games. He had a lot of bad plays. He did not have a good season, but it's tough for me to put it on him when you look <clears throat> at the crap he had to deal with. I mean, go back and watch that game we played against Stanford. I think it was a Thursday night game back in late September, and every single time he drops back for a pass, he's getting slammed. It's all he can do to get the ball out, and by some miracle, we win that game because our defense plays out of their damn minds. Highlight of the season right there. Oh, man. I mean, you know, great win, but offensive line, dog crap all year, and that, I mean, that's the main problem here. It's... The offensive line took a big step back. We lost two of our wide receivers, and without those pieces, the offense fell off almost as significantly as the defense came on. And I don't know where we go from here. I mean, the team 
like I said, in my opinion, the team was better simply because the better defense allows us to be in almost every game we play. Now, a lot of the good feelings I had about the season went away when we blew that Apple Cup game, you know, in that fourth quarter where nobody showed up. The defense, they couldn't get a stop. Offense couldn't move the ball. Special teams missing a chip shot field goal. It's just, oh. Uh, you know, why, why couldn't that kick have been, you know, three yards to the left? Then we're eight and four. Maybe we play a different team in the uh, bowl. Maybe we get a different bowl game, play a different team. Maybe we're thinking a little differently right now. But instead, we're back at seven and six for the third straight season. And, you know, with all the crap that happened in that game, all our bum-ass kicker had to do was make the kick. I haven't, I, I've intentionally forgotten his name because I don't like him. You know, he, you look at him and he doesn't look like a kicker. He looks like a linebacker. So immediately I just go, I don't think this guy can kick just by looking at him. And then he tries to kick and he can't do it. So, you know, this team, I still kind of see us as getting better, but we, in a way, in terms of getting to where we want to be, really feels like we're stuck in the mud because this offense, I mean, we got one more year of Keith Price and then he's probably going to kiss football goodbye because he's not a pro prospect unless somebody decides to throw up a prayer in the seventh round. And I, I don't see him as a pro prospect. So, you know, maybe he'll even come back for a fifth year. I don't know. I don't know how that'll work. I know that's possible, but I don't know. But you know, the team, it's frustrating because this is a school that is used to some level of success, a school that is used to being able to make Rose Bowls and compete for top 20 rankings and top 10 rankings. When I was growing up, you know, Brock Heward, Corey Dillon, Jerome Payton, they were the three-headed monster, the triplets on our offense that made it go. And, you know, later on we had uh, Cody Pickett. Rodeo guy, um, doing some things. Marquise Tuiapasoso, not um, not all-time great college players or anything, but very good ones and ones that were part of some very good Washington Huskies teams. And right now, I just it's tough for me to see how we compete with a school like Oregon with all the money that they have and all the great recruits they have. Although they the, they just lost their head coach, maybe that'll change a few things, but. I don't see how we regularly compete with the schools like even USC and coming on maybe UCLA because they just had a really good recruiting class. So it's frustrating right now because it's it's tough for us to compete with those schools because of all the money and all the prestige they have. And the Tyrone Willingham years really sucked all the prestige out of this Washington Huskies football team. But Signing day, we had a pretty good signing season. Um, most people agree that we had a signing season that was inferior to USC and UCLA and on the same level as Oregon and better than everyone else in the Pac-12. So that's a strong recruiting class. A couple highlights, um, might mess up his name, Elijah Qualls, defensive tackle. He is the prize of our draft class. Not you know, not our draft class, a recruiting class. Sorry, I got NFL on the brain. Um, you know, big guy can be good for us stuffing the run. Gonna just add to our superior defense, hopefully, and maybe we can start pushing up into a top twenty or top thirty defensive ranking next year. But what I really like about this um, recruiting class is Daryl Daniels and Demora Stringfellow, and those are two wide receivers. They're considered the second and third best players that we got. These guys are big physical wide receivers, and they hope to compete immediately for starting positions and on-field production. So my hope is that they can complement the offense and give us three legitimate wide receivers going into 2013. If you give us three good wide receivers, Casey Williams and the two new guys, and then you give me Safarian Jenkins, uh, Bishop Sankey, and an improved offensive line. That's the one thing that concerns me about this signing day. I don't know how great our new offensive line talent is. I know we got some guys coming back from injury, but you know, I want more depth. 
but in terms of weapons, there will be no excuse for Keith Price to not have a really good senior season. So all eyes are on him going forward. He's the guy who's taking all the blame for what happened last year because you can look at it. You know, we had a chance to beat USC, and Price just had a terrible game. You know, we <clears throat> had a lot of games where the defense had to win it for us because Keith Price just wasn't good. And, you know, even the bowl game against Boise State, I'm not putting it all on him, but he didn't play well. And he was a big reason why we did end up losing that game. Well, so that's what we're looking at right now. I'm happy with the good signing day stuff, and I'm happy with uh, some of the talent that we got on the offensive and defensive sides. Not perfect, but you're not going to be perfect. So let's just hope things pan out for this team and... I think that covers just about everything I wanted to say about these two teams in two long videos. Future videos should be a little shorter. Catch you later.